uh, back in the old days, uh, we had other bloggers telling their audiences that he seems angry, you know. The guy just isn't getting any sleep, okay? He's just a little cranky. Not angry, believe me. Not angry. Very content and happy person. Angela made beef pot pie this time. Or is it pot, pot pie? It's really good. It's a little spicy. Homemade crust and everything. It's a Mexican pot pie. The people that go abroad have a little bit of a different view and a different attitude, so they seem to be a little bit more open-minded, the ones that come down here, and in most cases, and they also seem to be more willing to, to make friends. Uh, that's, uh, that's one thing that uh, back in the U.S., sometimes seem to be a little bit harder to do is to make uh, friends. But when you did make them, for example, I still have friends in the States from 25, 30 years ago. You know, we stay in touch uh, on the phone and that kind of thing. Which uh, brings me to a situation. Now, before I get to that though, I wanna say that it is easier to make friends when you're abroad because people seem to be more willing to, to make friends. You know, I really love that about expats and Americans uh, that come down here. Um, and we have made some good friends that we still have. Unfortunately, some of them have left. They have gone back to North America. You know that I've been having some challenges uh, being abroad specifically due to the environment with the uh, elevation and the lack of sleep. I don't know. I think some people, if they have experienced this, they know what you're going through. When when you have a chronic uh, sleep loss, it can even cause a chronic long-term illness. Uh, but somebody mentioned in the comments that it's not just physical, it's also emotional and psychological, and it's true. And I can't say that it has interfered a lot, but it does sometimes cause, for example, uh, you know, you can get cranky. You can get cranky when you haven't slept for half a week and days, days and three, four days in a row, and you haven't. You, you're getting three, four hours of sleep. Uh, you know, you can be pretty cranky, and when you get cranky and snappy, people don't understand, and they then you lose friends. You know, so and and sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's like, well, come over, come over, but you're in such uh, your your condition is such that you really you're not really in any condition to be social you know and then sometimes you you can go for days where you're physically and emotionally in such a state that you're supposed to be making videos <laughs> you know you're because that's one of the things with you know YouTube is being consistent okay and putting your videos if you do one video a week then make sure you do it every single week on the same day same hour put that video up if it's three videos, make sure you do those three videos on all three of those. If it's two videos, you got to be consistent. And it's really hard to be consistent when you don't ever know when you're going to have a good day. It's like you don't ever know when you're going to have a bad hair day. If you're an actor, you know, you've got commitments. You got to go make that movie. If you're a whatever, you know, you got to be out in public. If you got to be in front of the camera, you got to be in a condition to make videos. And sometimes you're not you're not in a condition to make videos, and, but you still make videos. And so if, if people don't know you very well, then they, they don't know what to think and they assume things like, they assume that maybe you're angry. <laughs> back, uh, back in the old days, uh, we had other bloggers telling their audiences that he seems angry, you know? The guy just isn't getting any sleep, okay? He's just a little cranky, <laughs> not angry, believe me. Not a very content and happy person uh, for the most part, other than these challenges um, and some of the other challenges we discuss uh, ever since 2020 and uh, politics. Those are always frustrations in life that we have to just kind of, uh, you know, you do what you can and then you give the rest to God and let him handle it. So.
by the way, did I mention? <laughs> you knew it was coming. We're still in our $300, three bedroom, two bath, mostly furnished apartment. And we've never paid more than three or $400 anywhere we've gone in the world. And this isn't for tourism now, you know, I mean, if it's tourism, it's going to cost a little more. But even then, we still didn't spend what most people spend on tourism. I mean, I, I know of a single lady that was bragging about spending $30,000 a year traveling the world. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> we've made videos. We, we can show you how to do it on half and still do the same thing. So, um, something to consider because, you know, money does talk. <laughs> money talks and if you don't have it it screams <laughs> and i just don't have any difficulty going anywhere uh everywhere we go we seem to unless i'm you know a tourist uh and people say oh well i'm not going to be a tourist i'm going to be there a whole month <laughs> you know <laughs> um but yeah you know short term it costs more but uh, for long term i've always been able to find no matter where i'm at eastern europe southern italy Everywhere we've actually been, um, Panama has a lot of issues with prices. It's just so small and it's got a lot of pricing pressure from foreigners going on. Uh, it, it can be done with the right, you know, techniques and strategies. Uh, I ran into some information, you know, I run into this once in a while and it's like, actually it's all over the place now. It's, it's all over social media on YouTube, you know, 10 places where Americans can immigrate, 10 easy places where Americans can immigrate. And none of the 10 places are a surprise or anything new that you've never heard before, you know. And so, I mean, but these videos, they keep coming out, right? And it's like the first three places, the first on the list, unbelievably, I couldn't believe it was Panama. and. It's not that Panama is not easy to move to, it's just all of the abuse that I've already said in other videos that foreigners are putting up with just so they can, you know, justify going to a place that's eternal summer. And it's, uh, it's just awful there. First three places are like Panama, Ecuador, and uh, forget what the other one was. But anyway, uh, there must be a lot of uh, demand. It's like this. Um, you know, because of what's happened in 2020, right? And because of what's happened to the travel industry, a lot of people have chosen to stay home. Uh, and, and the thing about Panama is that we spent quite a bit of time in Panama and there's a lot to love about Panama. But if you do any on the ground uh, recognizance um, in Panama, that they got pumped really heavy, and they are right now, they're going through it right now too. Uh, they got uh, pumped really heavily by the retire broad media and magazines, the Rams, uh, back in the early 2000s. And, they, and they're such a small country with only four million people. Back then it was only three million. And that's a country. And so these, these, just these foreigners swarming on this place. And what happened is, if you get on the ground and do the recognizance, you'll see that they have half a million dollar houses that aren't worth a hundred thousand. I'm not kidding you. I'm talking about shoddy workmanship, bad tile, just bad construction, really cheap quality. It just isn't there. And that's what you're seeing in a lot of the information in these videos. I mean, the first thing that the guy says about Panama is he's reminiscing about when he was there when he was in the military and he's talking about the prices from 25 years ago unbelievable i couldn't believe i was listening what i was listening to that he's talking about panama being cheap and his reference point was 25 years ago just the quality of the information is just uh it's just slipping and so it is with uh, a lot of things where there's just too too many people doing it and too much demand uh, that the quality of the whatever it is whether it's something physical like construction or information you know about going abroad uh, the quality is just not there and i don't understand why people don't vote with their eyeballs and quit watching these videos because they don't really provide any real useful information.
<laughs> you know. <laughs> so sometimes you know we we go abroad and we find that we uh, we may have certain um, reasons why we're we're wanting to go abroad and travel and a lot of people over the internet will give us those reasons they will tell us what we want to hear i mean they will tell us that you know that all of the things we want to hear that you can live you know where i would live for a thousand dollars you know um i mean there are so many videos like that and the point is that first off most people don't really know how to do that and to make people believe that just go down here and I mean it, it I'm not saying it can't be done okay I don't want to misunderstood I'm just saying that a lot of people tend to do things in such a way that they that they put obstacles in front of them, themselves so that they that, that it doesn't happen but there's so many people out there that just want to tell us what we want to hear and they don't tell you what you should hear you know all we've ever tried to do is be the voice that needs to be heard. Be, be the voice that, you know, tells you what you really want to hear in an effort to, to help you. And in the past, that has, that has cost our channel. I mean, we've said in other videos that there is not one more hated than he who tells the truth, and that was from philosopher Plato back in the old Greek democracies in uh, um, back in the day, many centuries ago. And so I guess I'm just saying that, you know, we're not, we're not perfect people. Sometimes we're just, we just didn't get enough sleep. And uh, sometimes we just get really annoyed at the frilly videos out there that just tell people what they want to hear and they seem to be making uh, all the money and getting all the views. And, and it's one of those things that's really conflicting because in the Proverbs, we see that a wise man speaks little, and yet when you get on YouTube, what do you got to do? You got to speak a lot. So, and so that's what our goal has always been on our channel is to provide real, useful, and practical information about your retire early lifestyle, whether you choose to do it abroad, like uh, we did for the last 10 years and also like we did for the prior 20 years uh, back in the States. So I hope that I've inspired you to reconsider the idea that it's just, you know, that easy to click, click, click and get what you really need and just to be a little bit more informed about the actual facts of your retire early lifestyle. Thanks for watching.